Hello everyone. I'm here today with Laureen Gallagher. Hi Laureen. Hi Fiona. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Brilliant, thanks. Good, and good. You are the practice manager at 180 Dental in Bishopbriggs. Yeah, yeah. And you've come on today to help us out with any <laughs> issues we've got over dentistry during lockdown. Yeah. You're going to give us some tips. I'm trying my best. Uh -huh. You're going to give us some tips and hints on maintaining your teeth and getting through lockdown. Yeah. So, first of all, tell us what it is that you do at 180. So, basically, I'm the practice manager. So, I just oversee everything that's going on in the practice, um, the dentist, the nurses, the receptionist. Um, just make sure that everything's running smoothly and um, do orders, wages, stuff like that. Any marketing that we need done. All that kind of stuff. So just basically oversee everything that's going on in there. That's a lot. I know. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so what has happened to, to your practice then um, since this has all come about? The social distancing and then the lockdown? So basically um, we are just closed. Um, we did start the social distancing. We started all the washing the hands and not having many people in reception. Stuff like that. Um, but then... It was as soon as lockdown came, basically all dentists were just closed. Mm -hmm. um, so we're obviously really affected by that. Um, dentists have got a duty of care. Um, so they feel that they feel guilty that they can't see their own patients, which is kind of the worst scenario for them to be in. Uh -huh. um, so they are still triaging patients at the moment. So you still can phone your own dental practice um, and the dentist will triage you. Um, okay. if you're in any pain or anything like that um, but then it's all kind of directed to um, a local emergency hub basically that we've all set up right. um, so it's like everyone going towards the same hub and stuff like that rather than going to your local dentist so right. it is affecting them, it's affecting us because we're closed but it's affecting the dentist loads as well because they feel that they've got a duty of care that they really can't fulfil uh-huh and you're you're a qualified dental nurse, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how how did you get into it originally? What was what did you um, find so about it? It, it? One of my friends did it, um, and I just kind of found myself at one place like, oh, what do I want to do? Um, I had been to uni, and I was like, oh, what do I want to do? And then she was like, oh, why don't you try dental nursing? Like, I re I love my job, I love the practice I work in, and I was like, oh, right, okay, why not? She was like, it only takes a couple of years to get qualified. Like, why don't you just try it? And then I went in and I absolutely loved it. Um, and then from there, I just, I went from a dental nurse to patient coordinator and then from patient coordinator to practice manager. So, Wow. And is it, uh, is it five years you've been at 180? Is that right? Or is five it... years I've been at 180, yeah. And before that, um, I was at Oak Tree Dental in Cousyth, so... Okay, but I so love cool. Bishop Legs now as well, so it's much better. I like to travel as well. Uh -huh. Handy, and love, yeah, and I really like the team in 180. It's like a lovely wee team that we've got, so it's really nice. And what kind of services do you do at, at 180 normally? So, we do um, all the normal dental services, and we do like root treatments, fillings, all of that stuff. Um, but we do do a lot of cosmetic work in 180, so we do a lot of uh, smile makeovers. Okay. So we do a lot of like veneers, crowns and stuff like that um, and smile makeovers. We also do implants as well um, and invisible braces and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say the main kind of thing that we do apart from all the normal stuff is the smile makeovers. Um, we do like loads per week, like over 10 in a week. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Is it people that have had damage to their teeth, Lorraine, or is it tending to be young people who just don't really like the look of their teeth? Uh, well, a bit of both. Um, I think we've seen before and afters, a lot of people who have been scared of the dentist um, are coming in who do have a lot of damage and are just like, like just right. do it, just do this my way over and we do it, which is a great to see the before and afters. It's so nice. And just to see how differently they are after like their smile their confidence everything is just totally changed yes. and then we also have the full cosmetic side where people come in to get a cosmetic change they're wanting to change the teeth that they've got because they don't really like them or they want them whiter or brighter or whatever and yeah. um, so those are nice as well which is um i wouldn't say so much as young people um like 
between mid twenties and thirties are kind of the young age that want the cosmetics done. Right. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of uh, the older age as well that have came in to get cosmetics done and stuff like that. So and um, they just want a change, which mm -hmm. is nice. Yeah. They do also give all the options though, and um, there is other options rather than just getting like veneers or crowns, like. So mm -hmm. we do give all the options and then let them choose um, what they think is best for them. Yeah, because so. sometimes I suppose straightening and whitening's, you know, fine if the teeth are really healthy to start with. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. We would always recommend whitening as well if they want them whiter. It always depends what they're kind of looking for. If you're looking for just whiter teeth, we would say, yeah, like definitely go for the whitening. If you're looking for a change in shape in your teeth, then that's kind of different. Like we could do composite bonding and whitening or um, veneers, which is obviously going to give you the perfect shape that you want. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, or braces, like if it's the actual way that your teeth are sitting, then we would say braces and whitening or stuff like that. Um, but we do do a lot, a lot of smile makeovers. Um, and our dentist, George, is just like really good with it. He's, I, if I was going to get my teeth done or any of my family, I would send them to George. Right. So, I guess there's probably a little bit of creativity involved in it as well. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good eye for it. It's like seeing what, like, what exactly the patient's asking for, what they want. He's like, right, okay, I, I know exactly what you're wanting. And then, so he's got a good eye for it, um, which is really good. So, and most um, patients are like completely ecstatic, happy once they've got their new smile makeover. So, uh -huh. More confidence, which is what yeah. it's all about. So, yeah. what about you do um, NHS stuff as well and yeah. cleaning and all of that kind of stuff too. Yeah, so we do all NHS um, work, all maintenance, all stuff like that. We've got a lot. Mo our patients are mostly NHS. Um, we just do a, do a lot of private treatment. But, um, yeah, we do all NHS. Um, we do a lot of kids as well. We actually um, won Best Child Friendly Practice at the awards um, recently. So we are really big on children and being child friendly and trying to get all the kids in and as comfortable as possible, really. Brilliant. Well, that leads me on to my next question, which is one of the most important ones for me yeah. with two small children at the moment, is yeah. how my, my son's three and my daughter's one, how best to get them into a routine where they're happy to, to brush their teeth? Have you got any any advice yeah. for me? Um, so basically what we would do is we have, um, we're on board a lot with Child Smile and we've got like a lot of charts, um, egg timer, you get wee egg timers, like stuff like that, toothbrushes, stuff like that, anything that's going to encourage your child to do it. So, and I do know as a parent myself, it can be challenging to get them to do brush their teeth, especially at this time when you're asking them to be in the house all day, do, do homework, do this. Um, so well, the one thing I would say is just try and stick to try and stick to the routine morning and night make sure they're brushing their teeth um, but all the stickers charts and all that really work really well there also is a wee like um, singing toothbrush teddy thing that you can get that shows you that you're, you're brushing for two minutes which is really good uh -huh, yeah. um, but I mean sometimes which is just the worst is sometimes you just need to force them and pin them down and do it which is horrible I mean mm -hmm. but I mean, the sticker charts and all that are amazing, but if you can't do it, I mean, try your best. If you can't do it, I've got a good wee trick that I do with my wee girl is that I would put her on um, my bed. So put her on the double bed and make her lie down with her head back and then you just stand over her and do it, do it which is yeah. much better because you can get right into the all the wee bits, uh -huh. um, which is really good. Or if you're just sitting on a seat, get her to sit down on the floor and put her head back onto your knees and just try it that way, okay. um, which is really good. But I mean, you just really need to get in there and get it done. <laughs> Especially yeah. this time in lockdown, like, because I know myself that it's easy to just be have a jammy day or not do anything and then not brush their teeth. But we really need to do it because we're going to come out of this and just going to have loads of kids in pain if we don't just try and stick uh -huh. to morning and night um, and just try and brush them as much as you can. Yeah, and they probably... And no mind they're eating a wee bit more rubbish admittedly yeah, exactly. than what they would normally do um just sort of you feel it's a bit of guilt because they can't get out and do what they're doing and it's also a way of maybe rewarding for something so i'm probably a wee bit guilty of giving them a, maybe a few too many treats over lockdown 
for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was another point anyway that I was going to say is about the sugary foods. Um, obviously in lockdown, we're giving our kids a lot more stuff. Um, try and stick to meal times. So if they're if you want to give them a sweet or an ice lolly or something like that, like try and stick to meal times. So at lunchtime, then after lunch, give them a wee treat, and then dinner time after dinner, give them a wee treat. It's all the kind of snacking in between um, that is causing issues um, because it's you need to do it um, like you're better eating a packet of sweets all at the one time rather than eating a packet of sweets throughout the day. If you know what right. I mean, so like the um, sugar sitting on sitting on your teeth like all day. If you're eating packets a pack one packet of sweets all day, right? So if you eat one all at the same time then that's much better for your teeth than it is to be eating a packet like throughout right. the day. Well, that's interesting, yeah. I that's... know, which a lot of parents are shocked by that. Like, they don't realise uh -huh. that if you had a packet of buttons and you gave them two there, two, and then two, and then two, and then two, all day, it means that, that the sugar, they're getting sugar on their teeth all day. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're giving them one packet and eat the full packet, then it's giving their mouth time to get rid of the sugar, to get rid of the... um stuff in your mouth and then it's better for them so that's yeah. brilliant I mean sometimes I feel that you get into a routine and they're both really eager for the toothbrush and you're like that's great and then yeah. they completely go to pop <laughs> you oh, know, know. Like, it I just know. changes it really what you're saying is be consistent with it keep it going try and make it fun try and make exactly. it fun. try and make it as fun Good as you can I mean, even me and I'm in the dental field I sometimes struggle to clean my wee girl's teeth as well Sometimes they're just not having it and you're just like, oh, come on. Um, but as I say, I just really try and get in there and just like, come on, we're nearly done or hurry up. We'll, we'll do it really fast. And uh -huh. so it's just really hard sometimes. But just as long as you're trying like every day, then that's really all we can ask of you. Mm -hmm. We've got a question here from Susan. She's saying, um, so after you eat the full packet of sugary um, treats or whatever it is, should you be brushing at, at, at that point? Um, no, you don't need to. You can stick to your twice a day, but okay. it's just that um, the sugar actually won't be sitting on your teeth, which will then cause can cause the um, like uh, to, for them to get wee holes in their teeth or fillings or stuff like that. So the best, it's just that if you eat it all at once, then you're giving your mouth time. Your mouth cleanses itself, so you're giving your mouth time to get rid of the harmful mm. okay. um, sugar foods that's in there. So no, you don't need to brush your teeth. Just normal morning and night. Okay, and there's lots, can we talk maybe a wee bit more about kind of general adult hygiene now? Yeah. There's lots of wee gadgets on available now for flossing. Um, it's not just the, the strip floss anymore. There's lots yeah. of wee brushes and all kinds of things. What would yeah. you recommend people do as a routine for, for their own dental hygiene at home? Right, okay. So I would say stick to the morning and night as well. Um, there is such a thing as over brushing. So we would say stick to morning and night. Um, we would also say at least floss once a day. Um, so we do know in the morning it can be a bit of a pain if you're running late and stuff like that. So we may, maybe say stick to night time for flossing. Yeah. Um, but if you can do it twice a day, then excellent. If you can't, once a day is more than enough. Um, oh. There is a lot of things like water flossers and all that. We would usually say if you've got... Um, like a bit where you a wee trap area where you get food caught a lot, then a water flosser would be great. Right. Um, but I mean, it's not required. Um, flossing is can be just as good if you do it effectively. Um, you can also get like a lot of people don't actually like using floss because it's like kind of fiddly and like trying to get it around your fingers. So you can get like wee floss harps as well, yeah. which are good. It's like um, shaped like a an, a bow from a bow and arrow, and they're quite good. Um, or you do get TP brushes, which you can usually get in your dentist um, or the pharmacy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we would say at least trying to get in, to, in between your teeth once a day um, mm. and brushing twice a day. Yeah. Um, mouthwash is also good. Um, we, our hygienist um, usually says to use Listerine. She really likes Listerine. She says it really works. It's an essential oil mouthwash, so mm -hmm. it doesn't actually cancel out your toothpaste. So um, any kind of Listerine, we would really recommend. So yeah. Yeah, because that's one of the things, isn't it? They say don't brush your teeth and use your mouthwash at the same yeah. time. 
normally people do when they're getting ready for work is brush the teeth and mouthwash. But yeah. lithium should be okay for that. Yeah, yeah, because it's an essential oil, so it doesn't actually cancel out your toothpaste. Right. Um, okay. Whereas other um, mouthwashes can. So if you're going to use one, I mean, lithium would be good. That's what um, our hygienist would say, yeah. Great. So if at the moment, as you know, people are sitting at home, they might be suffering with ailments of some description or another, but they yeah. just don't want to go to the doctor, the hospital, potentially the dentist. How serious do things need to be to constitute an emergency and somebody's got to go and get some help? Right. Okay. So um, really, I mean, we are... Um, in the dental field, every every dentist should be there to um, speak to their patients. So okay. I would say it doesn't matter how big or how little it is. If you feel it's an emergency, definitely phone because there's somebody there, especially as at 180, we're there to help you. Um, they can also just message us over the 180 uh, Facebook page because there's always somebody on there that will answer you like pretty okay. quickly. So okay. there's that. Um, but I would say if you feel that you're in any pain, I would definitely phone. But um, I would say that the main thing is to get um, really seen because obviously we can see you, give you um, all the advice over the phone, we can sort out getting you prescriptions, so we can actually fax over a prescription to the uh, pharmacy, so you don't right. have to come and pick a prescription up, we would just fax it over to them and give them the details and then you just need to go to the pharmacy to pick it up, so it's cutting out like dental and then pharmacy. Um, so there's that if you need a prescription and then um, we would triage you and if we feel that you're in really a lot of pain then we would send you to one of the local hubs um, which it's all set up there to see patients um, but yeah so Okay so if in doubt people don't necessarily need to go somewhere but they should be making that call to their local dentist Yeah just yeah if in doubt Yeah I've, I've heard out, if you're in pain, we don't really want people sitting in the house in pain, do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. the dentist could give you advice that you wouldn't even don't think about doing, so mm -hmm. with stuff that you would probably have in your house. So it's good to just phone up, get a bit of peace of mind, or over, as I say, over the Facebook. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, there is that thing where people just don't want to actually physically go to certain places. Yeah, just yeah. I think there probably is a few people that are putting up with things, both medical and dental, that maybe they should be, you know, getting some attention for. So that's a really useful service that they've got in place that people maybe don't know is there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what's your next plans then, Lorraine? Have you been given any guidance from the government or anything about when you can get started again or what, what measures you would have to have in place or is that still all at large? Um, no, so we we don't really know any more than what um, the local people know either. Um, we are just waiting for the go-ahead to get back, back to it. Um, and I think the main issue for dentists is going to be PPE. I think... Um, before, before this was all happening, we were starting to get short of PP here and there, like hand sanitizer and all of that. Um, but obviously, as it went on and on, it's just there's just hardly any out there. Um, so that's going to be the main factor is they might say that, yes, we can reopen, but ultimately we can't reopen without the effective PP. Mm -hmm. So, and the masks that we were using before are no longer, we can't use them anymore because it's not right. actually help it's not helping with the virus so we need ffp3 masks which are a bit um right. more technical masks okay. um so we need them which as well as more expensive i mean everything's more expensive now we used to to get like a box of um masks it would be two pound for 100 and now or for 50 is it for 50 yeah and now it's like 12 pound for 50 uh -huh. so i mean and we need it's one use so it's like one every patient mm -hmm. and so just be that that we'll really struggle to get and then i think the social distancing measures we'll have to wait and see what our like the our general den dental council are saying as well like because we might not be allowed to have as many patients in the one day so mm -hmm. like we would maybe say like 50 patients a day that might be like, oh no, you can't do that anymore because it's too many people, too many people in the waiting room, and yeah, stuff like that. And I think they're talking about, there was a talk about um, if we did a procedure, and um, we would need to wait, like a surgical procedure, we would need to wait like an hour before getting a new patient in. 
So oh, right. there's that as well. So I just we are kind of in limbo as well. Um, we don't really know much of what's happening yet. Um, so, but I think the main thing is all dentists just want to reopen. Basically, they want to see their own patients. We want to um, help as much as we can. So, um, some dentists and dental nurses and stuff have been redeployed as well, though. Um, so a lot of people are working um, on the front line because they can do things like give injections and take blood yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of dentists are out still working. Some of them are in the hubs. Some of them are doing other um, like kind of clinical work. Um, so, but they're just basically all dentists just want to open up their own practices again and see their own patients. That's yeah. the main thing. Yeah, and how have you found the lockdown then? It's a wee girl you've got, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I've got a wee girl. Uh -huh. um, so it's kind of good days and bad days, isn't it? Um, <laughs> sometimes like, I just feel really guilty, like not being able to do much with her. And I think that's the main thing. Like, yeah, you can go out and about, but just being stuck in the house all the time. Um, I, f I do feel that like she's getting a bit more clingy as well, like because I've been with her for seven weeks now, whereas before... Yeah. I was working so I wouldn't have it as much and like so and she was never a wee a clingy wee girl she was kind of independent like didn't need to be in the room that I was in um whereas now I think she's really clingy um but I mean what can you do it's just everybody's just trying their hardest aren't they to get on with it yeah exactly yeah exactly so if everybody's out in their gardens which is nice yes I know and the weather's been lovely which has been brilliant hasn't it we've yeah. been very lucky yeah, it's been lovely. So if anyone fancies getting in touch with um, you at 180, Laureen, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, so they can contact us through the Facebook. Um, most of our staff are on there and can give you advice or whatever. So they, that um, you could also phone. Um, there's always someone there to answer your call. Um, I think when we're... Our calls have been answered between nine and four. Yeah, nine and four. So there's somebody there at that time. Out with that time, um, you could you can phone NHS twenty four as well if you've got a dental problem. Right. And they can um sort you out as well. Um, or you could like talk to us on the Facebook because someone will probably get back to you whether it's daytime or nighttime. Right. Okay. Um, Brilliant. So that's probably the best way to get in touch. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Florine. That's been great. It's been no lovely to come here. And you've got a lovely smile. Oh, thanks. <laughs> do you need to have a lovely smile to get into dentistry, or is that something that can be worked on? <laughs> you do not. You do not. But I mean, if you, if, you can, if you work in the place and you can get some money off, then why not? <laughs> uh -huh, of course, of course. <laughs> Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, Lorraine. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.